What's going on guys? John here from John's Fishing Channel. Today I will be unboxing and reviewing the Fish Cat 4. Uh, it is a Fish Cat float tube and it looks like a pretty decent little float tube. I'll be taking it down to a lake uh, in Southern California here and testing it out and we'll see what happens. So I've opened the box. Um, I've pulled out a couple pieces of foam here which say do not discard foam. These are seat cushions. So we have the cushions here, pieces of foam. Uh, in the bag we have the actual float tube that I'm going to roll out here pretty pretty snazzy looking float tube I didn't realize that it was so shiny uh, we want to make sure that we read all of the tags um, and look at the instructions on this before we inflate it I'm a you know I'm a man when it comes to instructions I don't really like to use them but when you buy something like a float tube you need to read the instructions they're probably like a six to eight step uh, inflation directions and care but you just want to make sure that you know all the ins and outs about your float tube, uh, how to put it together. You want to make sure you get all the foam in the right place, all the air in the right place, and you want to take care of it. All right, and here's the owner's manual. Here is a manufacturer certificate of origin, wherever that came from. And so this is going to be stop before you begin. Check for damage or missing parts. And this is going to give you all the information that you need. The pump, of course, was not included. There's the repair kit. And I'm going to go ahead and slide in the foam seats and inflate this bad boy. And we'll take a look at it. All right. First things first. Uh, we are going to insert the foam. Place deflated fish cap 4 on a flat surface. Install one of the foam seat buttocks in the front seat pocket. Okay. So this piece of foam right here is going to go in the front seat pocket. We're just going to go ahead and slide them right under here, I guess. Alright, so these both are going to go in here. That slides in pretty easily. See if I can get the second one in here. I actually put the first one in sideways and then ended up turning it. Uh, but I'm not going to have enough room to do that with this one. Now this is a. This could be construed as difficult to set up. You know, trying to jam your foam pieces in here. Uh, especially, you know, like a, if you're older or don't know much about float tubes, this could definitely be a hassle. I can make sure I have these in the right spot too. So. So I've got the foam in. Like I said, that could be considered difficult to uh, insert, but it is also only a, a one-time process that you need to worry about. Uh, and it looks like these are probably gonna strap on here somewhere. Put that cover down. We're gonna take the strap and strap in the seat cushions. Alrighty, so that's that. And this is the seat back that we're going to put in. Um, I don't think I actually should have tongued these straps first, but we'll get to fit. Yeah, I have to. I actually have to undo the straps to get uh, this part of the cushion in. This one goes in fairly easy. Just slides right in there, and that's going to be the back of your seat. Uh, this is going to fold up, sit up like this. So we're going to do these straps again after we have all of the cushions in. And that will prevent any of the cushions from getting out, which they're in there pretty tight. I don't think they'd get out anyways. Alrighty, so there's that. So the cushions are ready to go. Cool. 
And just like that, our flow tube has the cushions. Could be pretty comfortable. Alrighty, so flipping through the instructions here. Back seat, valve cap, I've got the apron on here. Okay, basically it looks like now I just need to uh, fill it up with my pump that I bought. The pump is not included in this. Flippers are not included with this model. There are certain flow tubes out there that come with uh, pumps and flippers. It's kind of a whole kit, but this was just the flow tube in the box by itself. I have a stand sport uh, double action hand pump. That means when you pull up, it'll push air in, and when you push down, it'll put air in. So uh, let's pump this bad boy up. There's a two valve system on this flow tube. It's a quick release valve and also uh, a quick fill valve. So I'm going to take my extension on the pump here, put it in, lock it in, and start the pump. simple. I filled up one half of the flow tube in under a minute. We're going to go ahead and fill up the other side. Get our quick release valve set. And then our get our air valve going here. Take the tag off. Insert the pump. And we're ready to go. off there but no air came out we've got the reverse valve on there that doesn't let air out which is really convenient all righty and that is pretty much it for the setup of the fish cat 4 now we're gonna sit here like this and we'll go out, we'll go fishing, we'll adjust all of our straps, our friend will be in the water, I'll have my life jacket on, I have all my gear in here, I've got uh, the repair kit, beverage holder, tackle holder, got a couple other zippers here with pockets. This is a pretty, pretty nice little float tube. I'm excited to get it out on the water. Let's go test it out. I almost forgot, the fish cat also comes with an apron. Uh, so you can measure your fish up to 18 inches. That's going to be no good because my catch is bigger than 18 inch fish. Uh, but this will sit across your lap and will allow you to kind of have a little tray in front of you uh, to hold and work the fish, you know, work on your tackle, bait, anything like that. It also came with a bag. All right, boots, waders, life jacket, pump, fins, tackle, rods are inside. That's my emergency car kit, by the way, if you're wondering what that was. Has, uh, you know, jumper cables, flares, wrench, pliers, all sorts of stuff like that. Float tubes going in last because that's going to be the first thing that I always pull out and pump up right away when I get there. This is for my keys. I put those on my keys whenever I go out in the water. So in case I do drop my keys in the water, they're going to float. They're not going to sink. Uh, I would recommend doing that because if you lose your keys, you're screwed. Got the net. There it is. Such an easy setup to put in your car. So awesome. <laughs> That's the one thing I love, you know, if you're new to fishing and you really, you don't really know what you're doing, you want to go out, I recommend going to, you know, these lakes like Corona Lake that are private, they stock them, it should be fairly easy to catch fish with the, the proper bait and a little know-how from the local bait shop, but you can go out in a float tube, you can spend about five, five hundred to a thousand dollars on a float tube setup, rods, tackle, everything that you're going to need, and then you can go out and just start fishing by yourself, um, it's really independent, it's a great way to actually get into fishing, um, and if you don't want to go the float tube route, you know, you can just fish from shore, which is also really fun too, you can catch a lot of fish um, from shore in a lot of different places, so next time I see you guys, it'll be 6 a.m., the sun will just be coming up, and we will be headed out to the lake, hopefully to get her done. All right, guys, here I am, 6 a.m., Corona Lake. There's about one or two people already out on the lake. The water looks really good. Um, I asked the guy in the bait shop here about uh, tips and you know hints to catch catfish, and 
Charabora. I'm not sure. It's an Asian fish. It's really, really good eating. It's a little uh, fish about maybe eight inches long at the most. They get pretty big, but they're not big here. Uh, so I'm going to be fishing for that. Trying to catch some catfish mainly today. I will be trying to catch some bass. They're in here. They're hard to catch. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and pump up my float. All right, so there it is. Rods, cooler, tackle box, flim, swim flims, everything I need in my pockets. I've got live bait for catfish. Here we go. I'm going to put my bait in my cup holders for now. Grab my rods and slowly work my way out here. Try not to let my float tube get away from me. Walking through weeds. I've got my flippers on. All right, and just like that, away we go. Um, one thing I did too is I took some rope, I tied it to the float tube here. Um, and since I have rod holders, I just take this and I simply just loop it around um, like that to make sure in case my rod does fall off for some odd reason that it's still connected. All right guys, so here I am on the lake. Pretty nice day. Just kind of paddling along here. Uh, right now I'm jigging a night crawler. Uh, just kind of pulling it behind me until I get to a few of the recommended spots that the guy at the bait shop gave me. All right, this is what the catfish are biting on apparently. Ugh. Mmm. This is scented mackerel. This would be one reason why you connect everything to your float tube. I would have lost that and I wouldn't have even noticed until I went to get a fish. And uh, so far, so good. I've got two rod holders that I've put on here. I put a little piece of duct tape on um, just to hold the strap actually to the tube because it's not actually connected. Um, I also have put in my own rod holder uh, connectors. So I loop a piece of rope around the rod down there just in case it were happen to fall off. You know, I just didn't lose my rod. I've got a rod holder over here. I'm using my cup holder as a bait holder today. Cup holder. Um, I've got all my quick tackle I need in here. I've got my safety whistle, pretty much a lot of different stuff. My net's attached over here. Uh, the cooler at the tackle box. One thing I'm really unhappy about is my tackle box. You can see all this water right down here um, is just absolutely drenched. So kind of a bummer. The bottom of the cooler's wet. Not the end of the world, you know, tackle boxes were designed, uh, you know, to get wet and lures were designed to be in water. But uh, I don't know, it's just kind of a bummer. And I don't know, uh, I'll have to look at the definition of dry. This claims to be a, oh boy, is that a fish? Oh boy, oh boy, I think I got a fish. I'll have to look, uh, oh boy, maybe not. I'll have to look at the definition of a, a, a dry sitting float tube. I don't know if that means that it sits above the water and you still get a little wet and you're not sitting in the water. Um, but I'm definitely getting wet. I am sitting above the water a little bit. Uh, but it's a pretty decent float tube. You know, it's easy to cast out of. It's easy to fish out of. It's easy to maneuver. Um, it turns well. Um, I don't know what kind of fins I'm using, but these fins work pretty great. And uh, it's a nice, nice little setup. You know, you're really independent in a flow tube, which is really nice. You know, you can just kind of go do whatever you want to do. You can go at your own pace. It's all you. You don't have to worry about any other people interfering with you fishing. Well, at least not on your flow tube. Other boats could be an issue. Um, you know, kind of tearing around the lake, not really paying attention. That's the one dangerous thing about being in a float tube is getting hit by a boat. So a lot of float tubes, you know, they put orange uh, reflective type material on the, the float tube. So hopefully people will see them and you need to kind of be vigilant. Always looking around, seeing if anybody's coming at and being like, hey, hey, you know, because you definitely do not want to get hit by a boat in a float tube because that would really, really, really hurt. So I'm going to continue on fishing here. Um, all in all, I would give this float tube probably about a seven and a half out of ten. It's a great float tube. It does have a few uh, issues such as putting in this seat pad. It was extremely difficult um, and I went online and there was a tutorial video of how to put the pad into the pad holder um, and let me tell you what they had a big guy on there and he tried to make it look easy and he was still struggling so that's pretty much my only um, complaint of that in the water you know in my tackle box about this float tube other than that I mean it's pretty awesome I would recommend probably getting it you know if you're looking to get a sweet float tube set up this is kind of middle of the line float tube it's not poor quality or anything and it's not you know excessively nice but it is just a, a nice nice little float tube it's got a lot of 
different cool features on it that I really like. The cup holders are cool. It's got a lot of different pockets. Um, the seat's pretty nice. It's comfortable. One thing I really, really, really like about the Fish Cat 4 is the pad that I am sitting on that's difficult to put in. Um, it will actually float if you run out of air. So you have kind of a life uh, saving device underneath you if you were to pop two tubes and say you're going down you know you can cling to that pad and it's gonna float you so that's really cool it's really reassuring um, to have that feature in a float suit because drowning would be terrible <laughs> alright guys so I'm to one of the recommended spots more often than not I you know I don't actually go ask the people in the bait shop for directions or uh, how to catch fish information not direction but information um, and they are really knowledgeable because they're here every single day so they really know what the fish are biting, where they are. I um, mean, he gave me a few spots around the lake to try, and this happens to be one of them. So I'm gonna drop my uh, float tube anchor here, which I've never used, so this will be interesting. With my luck, I'll uh, throw it in the water and it won't be connected. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And now I am anchored. And a, slip, a simple slip knot is pretty much going to hold me where I need to be. Uh, and that is how a float tube anchor works. Now I just need to worry about my direction. Line in the water. I don't, I just must not be doing this right. Because the guy said if I go to these two spots, I probably should catch catfish. And I haven't. I'm using pretty large hooks, big jigs. I don't know if that has something to do with it. Um, I had a couple small hooks, but those are the two that I broke off thus far. So I'm gonna switch to a topwater bass lure. I don't know if this is gonna work or not. Uh, you know, my theory is if you fish long enough, you're bound to catch something. So hopefully, I don't know, I can catch a bass around here something, somewhere, something, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, but, you know, I'll continue to kind of update you guys as what's going on during my fishing experience. That bird just got pissed. He was like, wah. Stop recording. Um, one thing I like to do when I'm float tubing is I've got this log right here in between my legs, kind of using it as an anchor while I fish this weed line here. Uh, it's just kind of an easy way uh, not to use your float tube anchor, not to get blown around the lake. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work my way back around uh, the far side of the lake here all the way back down. I'm parked all the way down over there. Um, and if I get there without catching anything, I probably am not going to stay. I'll head home. Um, but I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully I catch something. I have one more spot that he recommended that I try. Two more spots. One over here in the weeds and then one down on the other end of the lake in the rocks. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Alright, just to give you guys a quick update of what is happening. Uh, I just turned off the camera from the last time I was talking to you guys. I threw this top water. Uh, it's a double propeller, cripple killer, uh, imitation of a frog. I threw it right up against the weeds here, right in front of me. Um, and I actually had a bite right when it landed. So I dropped anchor. Uh, I'm gonna pound this shoreline. It's pretty muddy water. Um, so you can throw a cast 10 times, 12, 13, 14 times, um, and a fish might not see it until that 14th or 15th time. So since I had a bite here, uh, I'm just gonna pound this shoreline for about 30 minutes probably. I mean, I'm gonna cast over and over and over and over again up and down the shoreline um, and hopefully I will get another bite and we will have fish on hopefully god I hope I catch a fish I hate getting skunked I can't stand going out and not catching fish when I'm fishing it it just it drives me absolutely nuts all right guys so success I've netted my first catfish uh, hooked it on a uh, a piece of mackerel that I was using he's got a really weird thing going on on his side there but uh, I don't know. Awesome to catch a fish finally. I'm really, really excited. I'm pumped that I was actually able to catch a fish on Corona Lake. Uh, it's been two solid days of fishing, 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 not catching anything. Um, so I'm really happy to catch this fish. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and let him go here so he can swim away. And that was awesome. Ew, there's a dead fish over here. Huh. So I caught my first catfish. That was awesome. Yay, and that's really disgusting. Look, it's like a dead one. Gross. Fresh meat. Mmm. Well, that's disgusting. Alrighty, so, um, what I've been doing is I was, I was fishing one rod with a jig and a piece of meat, just kind of dragging it along, and then I've been fishing the topwater bait for bass um, near the shore. Uh, and when I actually, I hooked that one, it was kind of interesting because it was almost like I... I didn't even hook anything. I just noticed my rod tip kind of going like this. Um, and then I, I set the hook and hooked the fish. So that was really cool. I didn't actually get to film 
uh, me reeling them in because I don't know, it's kind of hard to do that on a float tube by yourself, but hopefully I can get some action um, of another fish. It kind of happened really quick, but I feel vindicated. I caught a fish on Corona Lake. Yes, now hopefully we can catch it more. All those birds just hanging out. Give it in hot, birds. Uh -huh. Oof. All right, guys, so it's been uh, it's about 10 o'clock, 10.30. I've been out here for about three and a half hours. Caught one fish, missed one fish. Uh, pretty productive day compared to the last day out here. So I'm gonna pull my stuff out of the water. We're gonna call it a day here at Corona Lake. And next time we come back, we're gonna catch two fish. And we'll work our way up from there. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm John from John's Fishing Channel. Woo! I almost fell over. That would've been hilarious.